Ladies and gentlemen, in the ring at this time, a young man who hails from Atlanta, Georgia. He is an advocate of the Yamato Damashi combat style. He weighs 190 pounds. He stands six feet tall, introducing Juan Mott. And his opponent from the country of Japan, advocating karate as his combat style, weighing in at 190 pounds, standing five feet nine inches tall, here is Yarashiro Manasote. All right, we're getting ready for this one. At 40 years of age, a detriment? Are you ready? Are you ready? No. Let's do it. And why, Ron? The Japanese have unbelievable endurance and they have discipline. Their whole code of honor does not allow them to submit either. You know, I saw Matsumoto in Japan. He had his arm broken and he would not submit. Wow. And Mott delivering quickly with the right hands. And they both go for side kicks. The Japanese fighters moving forward and back in Kyokushin or other Japanese styles. Circular movements really are not a significant part of the style. He knows front and back. Attack. Attack. Once again, the circle in the ring cannot be used as an advantage in these bouts. Matsumoto trying to turn the action in his favor as Mike has the early upper hand. Both fighters seem content to be standing. Interesting to either one of you. Uh, Ron, let's well, start with you. I should you. try to take him to the floor, and I expect to see that soon. That was going to be my question. Yes, I thought there might have been a takedown much sooner than this. I agree. Knowing you're fighting a, a Japanese karate stylist, I would say go to the ground if you have ground grappling. Oh, here we go with the guillotine. Matsumoto has a guillotine. Has he locked it in? If he can hold it. One might needs to counter this. He needs to bring himself very close to his opponent, wrap his arm around him. Don't let Matsumoto get leverage and crank that choke. He's not doing it. We can't see the forearm to see what truly Matsumoto has this choke in. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. There's an arm in between the choke. Uh -huh. So he doesn't have it locked in cleanly. No. Matsumoto locked in on top. Matsumoto is using his knee to attack Juan's leg, which will have an effect later. And those stomps on the top of the foot will definitely affect his kicking and standing ability later on. No, it's, it's interesting. Both fighters are probably finding themselves in a position with which they're not entirely comfortable or familiar. And Juan has just put his hand inside of the uh, grab, so I guess he's not going to be able to crank that choke. He's trying to, look like he was trying to pick him up. Looks like a suplex. Yeah, it did. Now, it's interesting. If that arm is in tightly, if Matsumoto were to wrap his legs around Juan Mott, go to the ground on his back, he'd have far greater leverage to apply this choke. And Mott finally broke the hole. Finally broke the hole. And then delivers a fierce right hand. Up. Ron, you think this could be one of the longer fights of the night? It will be a longer fight. I mean, I can see that Matsumoto is just working slowly, patiently, using the knee against the leg and the groin area. That may hit him in the face. It's good. Mott being inexperienced, as in comparison to Matsumoto, could he tire himself? Really not having a, a way to pace himself in this match? Well, youth has an advantage in this type of event. And Mott landing and Mopton. I mean, that was a nice round kick that Juan Mott threw, but it wasn't powerful. Mott's a little veteran of the wars in Japan. He'll take far more than that. Pretty neat. Keep on working him. Let's get him back to the back. Get him back to the back. 
Once again, they are backed up against the protective screen. Referee checking. Looks almost like a sumo hold grabbing the trunk. Yeah. Behind the <laughs> go hop, fight out. Let's go. Go hop. You just gotta stay busy with some money. Let's go. Referee warning the two grapplers to stay busy. That's right. Relax that body. Calm the body. Ron, is there a tendency when you have an opportunity like this to try to get a quick breath, a quick rest? Yes. Yes. And this obviously would be the time when you're both engaged so closely and you're up against the fence. Of course. They've been up for a long time. I expected Mott to take Matsumoto to the floor earlier in this event. One thing that's very interesting to see here is that in an event where you're allowed to clinch and not separate it, how difficult it can be to put your opponent down with a punch or a kick. It is obvious that Mott has landed the heavier punches. And there is a direct aim. And he's out. He's out, and that's it. Beautiful move of the Something completely by surprise. And Juan Mott in disbelief of his victory. That fighter is out. Ring doctor should be coming in. And they will quickly attend to Matsumoto. Matsumoto is out on his feet. Right knee to the chin, right hook to the jaw. Beautiful, out before he hit the canvas. And Juan Mott will fight. Another time. You know, there's one thing that said, a good jaw is not made. A good jaw is something you're born with. And we may have just seen there evidence where someone had those neuronal pathways, the nerves that go from the jaw to the brain, hit the right way, put them out. And once again, they are checking on Matsumoto. For boxing, you'd say, wouldn't say a weak chin, but you'd say it's a chin you want to take advantage of. All right, let's go up to ring announcer Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 5 minutes, 20 seconds. The winner due to submission by a towel being thrown into the ring, Juan Mott. And Juan Mott is in the semifinals. Now you see the combatants here all of a sudden tie up and right then knee. bang, the right knee. Right knee to the chin. Right to the chin. And he was out on his feet and went down. He was finished right there, right? He's out now. He's out now. And immediately the referee steps in and stops the bout. And Matsumoto, we can tell you while we watch the replay once again, is up and walking back to the dressing room and he is okay. That's one of those flash knockdowns out there. And Mott did not waste any time, Ron, in taking the advantage after the knee landed. Without a doubt, he went right to the mount of position and full speed blasting time. Four or five punches of face, that was it. And then the celebration, even in disbelief that he is the winner. Ron, what is that feeling like right there? 